On the first steps of the Himalayas, at an altitude of 6,000 feet, is Dharamsala, in the northwest of India. It is the capital and the heart of Tibet in exile, home to between 5,000 and 6,000 Tibetans. The heart, because this is where the Dalai Lama lives, spiritual leader of his 7 million compatriots. In 1959, with almost 100,000 of them, he was forced to run away from his native Tibet after China invaded the country in 1950. Under his enlightened guidance, Tibetans re-established a government in Dharamsala, along with all the institutions destroyed in Tibet. The Mansikhang, Tibetan Medical Institute, the Nobulinka, Conservatory of Artistic Traditions, the Tipa, Tibetan Institute of Performing Arts, which perpetuates performing arts traditions. And the most important, the children's villages, where younger people are taught Tibetan traditions as well as a modern education. Hundreds of monks and many grandmasters live around the Dalai Lama. They dedicate their life to study, prayer, meditation and teaching. Dharamsala is world famous thanks to the Dalai Lama, but many other Tibetan communities are scattered across India, their land of refuge. In spite of a very precarious situation, the Tibetan communities in exile show a strong social cohesion and a strong identity. They build hope and draw strength from their supreme spiritual guide, the Dalai Lama, Grand Master of the Mind. Children by the dozens, by the hundreds, by the thousands. We are in India, in a village of Tibetan refugee children. There are a dozen villages like this throughout the country. They take in more than 6,000 school-aged children from 3 to 18 years old. It is the main Tibetan institution they have in exile. This institution was founded in 1960 by the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama following the 1950 invasion of Tibet by China and the exile of more than 150,000 Tibetans in 1959. These schools are the seeds of the future Tibet and the much anticipated return to the motherland. In these villages, the future of Tibet. If Tibet is dying a little every day under Chinese dictatorship, it is thriving on Indian soil. For over 60 years, they have taught tens of thousands of children, educated in the language, culture, history, and tradition. Born in exile for three generations, they've never known their homeland. Their joie de vivre is evident. It has the Buddhist philosophy as its origin, which perpetuates nonviolence, kindness, and peace of mind. The Dalai Lama, their spiritual leader, is their supreme guide. Tibet and Tibetans are the bearers of unique values in our tormented world, searching for spirituality. Losing them would be a tragedy for all humanity.
We are flying over the Himalayas, the roof of the world. 1,000 kilometers due north from Delhi, the capital of India, a one-hour flight, destination Ladakh. Ladakh is a former realm bordering Pakistan and China in the north, and Tibet under China's rule in the east. At an altitude of over 3,500 meters, in the extreme northwest of India, the whole country is a high-altitude mineral desert with sparse vegetation, notably lacking water. The farmers sow barley, wheat, mustard, potatoes, peas and carrots. Cultivation happens in spite of a cruel need of water. With a surface area of 70,000 square kilometers, Ladakh is often called Little Tibet. In two generations, this changing region has gone from the era of pastoral nomadism to the age of cell phones and traffic jam in the capital, Leh. In less than 40 years, its population has increased fivefold, from 10,000 to 50,000 inhabitants. In less than half a century, Leh has gone from the era of yacht caravans to all-terrain vehicle convoys. In 1980, on my first visit, there were almost no private cars, but nowadays the traffic is jammed, almost to an unmanageable point. Some celebrations in the monasteries take place in the middle of winter, as in Spituk, for example. Built at the top of a vertiginous peak, the monastery draws big crowds in January for sacred rituals. An impressive tanka depicting Tsong Kappa has been rolled out. As the great reformer of Tibetan Buddhism in the 14th century, he is also the founder of the Yellow Hat School, to which the monastery belongs. The monks are wearing yellow crested hats, the color symbolizing order. Happiness comes from being in harmony with humans in the society, with nature, environment, animals. That's what is progress and not just uh, the income and the GDP and uh, economic progress. So I hope that we can work towards a Ladakh of that kind. Let's hope that this vision of things becomes reality in Ladakh, especially for young people. But at only one hour flight from the great Indian cities, will the younger generation manage to resist the attraction of the city lights? As the old world slowly disappears, the new world sets in, shaking up the established codes. But it seems willing to remain Ladakhi because it is worth it. Thank you.